first thing that happens is I suppose um, that we start the tanning process of the leather. So we get a we get a, a cow hide or a steer hide, and we prefer steers rather than cows, but we don't always get that. Um, for well, and that's tanned in a uh, an Allen tan process, which is a very old form of tannage and a very old fashioned tannage, which was once again used in in those days, in those early days, and we followed that through. And the advantage of an alum tan process um, is that using alum uh, in the tanning toughens the leather and makes it more scuff resistant and therefore it wears better. One of the characteristics which is very important in the way the game's evolved over that 200 odd years since uh, it was first started. And well, you're trying to form these two halves, these two quarters into a hemisphere. So you sew them, they're shaped and they're cut in a certain way so that they form a, a, a rough hemisphere. And then you, uh, by using presses and stretching methods, you block the cover into that sh into a shape which is like a hemisphere, ready so that it, you can get two halves which you can present uh, to the stitcher or to, to the machine to sew the ball together. And whilst we're doing that, of course, we've got to make the centre of the ball, which traditionally was always made from, uh, uh, in a very rudimentary way, but then eventually it was made from cork, from worsted yarn, and they'd start off with a very small nucleus of cork, a lot, but very small, and then they'd wind worsted yarn onto it, and then they'd put layers of cork around that and build it up into what we call a... Um, and a homogeneous mass. So for first class and test cricket today, the Kookaburra ball still has a core constructed in much the same way, achieving exactly the same results as those very early uh, foundation innovating people back 200 years ago. Uh, we, we've got a formula for, for dyeing, for producing the tanning of the, or the, the tannage, which the tannery had uh, work to and then we to that uh, when during the tanning process the colour or the dye is added and the colour has evolved again over the period to the cherry red that we know today and part of the process is to ensure that during the tanning process and then the work that we do through the factory we ensure that we get a nice even colour so that when the ball comes out from at the end of the line, the blemishes and marks and discolorations are either uh, 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 disappear out of the ball. You select the leather and then cut it into uh, the various panels, uh, in the case of a four-piece ball, into quarters. And we stretch and, and uh, manipulate the leather in such a way to make it pliable and use it and, and, uh, in, in a form which is we can present to uh, the equipment the machines that we use these days to manufacture the ball. We're previously, obviously in the early days, are completely handmade. Uh, that today would be is not feasible or affordable, so we've evolved uh, mechanical uh, ways of doing things to reduce our labour costs. And then we bring those components together and put the core inside the centre of the ball, inside the covers, and then we put the covers together and we sew them. And it's very carefully through a, through a very calculated process, we ensure that we get the ball coming out to the right size with the right thickness and the right weight. And as part of that process, um, these days the two outer rows of stitching are now um, just put there, not for but don't put on the ball, but don't form part of the construction, but are very important in the playing and the performance of the ball. Whereas in the originally, back in the early days, they needed those three rows of stitching on either side of the seam dial, which went through to hold the ball together. And it's pushing that and bringing all that together, that's the art of cricket ball making.